it's me, Christina Zachary with the Zachary team with Phyllis Browning Company. We are back here with another podcast of our podcast, Home Sweet Home San Antonio Live. Today we are going to be joined by Sarah and she is the CEO of Tribu, which is a marketing and advertising agency here in San Antonio. So I can't wait to get that started. But thank you so much for joining our podcast. We're super excited to have you here today. And I just can't wait to get started. But in the meantime, we hope you guys are having a wonderful 2024. As always, we are San Antonio's world to couple. So if you need help buying, selling, or investing in San Antonio, please reach out to us at 210-504-5301. We'd love to help you out and uh, talk anything real estate. That's what I'm doing all the time, except for now. I want to get to Sarah already. Hi, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Welcome to our podcast. Thanks for having me. Don't be nervous. We're just going to have cool conversation. Cool. There's millions of people watching. Nice. <laughs> So just to kind of start off, tell people your name, uh, your business, kind of just a little bit about you before we get started. Cool. So I'm Sarah Helmy. I own Tribune uh, Creative. We are a branding and digital marketing in sa- agency in San Antonio. Tribune means tribe in Latin. I'm born and raised here, San Antonio. <laughs> I've got two babies at home, three and a half, the oldest, and one this month is the youngest. And husband, Jason, of course, also born and raised here. Ah. Uh, San Antonio's home. Absolutely love it. Place, okay. Place we, you know, started our family, started the business, yeah. and, and grew up. <laughs> okay, so let's yeah. talk about, because I yeah. was, honestly, I was born in Del Rio, mm-hmm. but I moved here when I was like three or four, so, so I'm going to say, I'm home. just born here. Yeah. <laughs> Texan, I'm born here. So yeah. I've grown up here just like you. What oh. side of town of San Antonio did you grow up on? So I actually grew up in Holotus. And okay. Yeah. What's funny is it's like. So um, the boonies. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back then. <laughs> yeah. Like right, right. Literally outside of my neighborhood. Like you could drive just a teeny bit. Yeah. And you'd be at like Flores Country Store. Um, really? Yeah. Wow, where they okay. had like the Texas country yes. concerts and all that stuff. So uh-huh. I grew up there. Like in high school, we would just climb onto the roof and we could hear the, the concerts at Flores. That is so um, cool. What yeah. high school did you go to? So I actually went to health careers. My home high school would have been O'Connor. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I went to health careers. Um, I thought I wanted to be a dentist. Yeah. <laughs> I was off. I did not want to be a dentist. Um, but uh-huh. it was cool. Uh, it was a small school, you know. And it made it so that we I kind of had friends from everywhere. Health careers was right next to Marshall High School, so we had yes. friends from over there. Mm-hmm. I, my neighborhood had all the O'Connor kids in it, so friends from every, over there. Like, it, it was cool, you know. So what year did you graduate? I graduated 07. Okay, we, we I was, was 08. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, we would say uh, class of 07 goes to heaven or something like that. You know, you know how every class has their phrase? That was ours. Maybe we had one, I just don't remember. <laughs> class of 08? <laughs> I don't know. Always. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> always not gonna go. or something. I don't <laughs> always, know. <laughs> pretty much. Okay, yeah. cool. So um, you graduate high school and um you decide to start tribute so tell us about like that journey from high school and wanting to be a dentist yeah. to to that because that's two totally different industries it's just oh yeah different. totally there was there was college in between yeah. uh so i yeah i actually went to college under like uh my major was biomed uh-huh the dentist yeah. route yeah. still yeah <laughs> okay um, and college was Texas A&M Corpus Christi and it was mm-hmm. selected simply because I just wanted to be by the beach and yeah. it was the closest beach. Uh-huh. So, yeah. uh, that was how yeah. I made my college decision. And it was actually like in college. Also, that was a blessing in disguise because TAM UCC or Texas A&M Corpus, awesome school, uh, I've super close. Seen two the and campus. It's really nice. Yeah. And it, it was like that. I didn't know how good of a school it was for me when I picked it, but it ended up being an amazing place. The classes are kind of small. Mm-hmm. The teachers are really great. Yeah. Um, and there was a biology professor in one of my sophomore year classes who was like, are you like, are you really wanting to do like to study science? And I was like, why are you asking me that? Like I have yeah. an A in your class. And he yeah. was like, you just don't seem like, like, a science person. I was like, what do you mean by that? You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was like, I don't know. I just thought I would ask. He was like, you know, the, the road you're on means a lot of time in a lab. It's a lot of introverted work and you talk a lot. Like you're yeah. very like extroverted and yeah. social. And I was like, really? <laughs> so yeah. 
But it, and he just, he asked out of curiosity, but it plugged it in my brain. I was like, wait a second. It was like second. planting the seed. Yeah. I was like, is this what I want to do? Yeah. Uh-huh. And so I switched my major a zillion times until I found marketing. Yeah. Yeah. And then came back here after uh-huh. college. Um, met my husband here on, in a, during a summer. Yeah. Was like, this is going to be a cool summer fling. Yeah. And <laughs> because I'm going back to graduate, yeah. you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, he ended up reorganizing his work schedule so that he could be there for a portion of the week. So he ended up doing long distance and I was motivated to get back here. You yeah. Know? Um, and so when I got back here, I did internships at agencies over and over and over again. And uh-huh. um, they hired me out of college, which I was like, cool. Mm-hmm. Like the internship wisdom worked. And I did about six or seven months at the agency before I was like, you know what? I go, I want to start my own. Yeah. So, sorry. That was a long answer. No, but no, you're fine. You're fine. That's how it got from <laughs> dental to. Yeah. No, it's really cool how some yeah. people just are in your, just mm-hmm. even like come in your life, even if it's just like a sprinkle of a seed or mm-hmm. they're just like, whoop, and then next thing you know, they're gone. Yeah. So it's just really cool how he was able to implant that in your brain. You're like, huh, that's actually really interesting. So mm-hmm. what companies did you work for? Or like you said, the six to seven months, yeah. what company was that? It was it was Boss Creative at mm-hmm. the yeah and at the time they were they were about forty people or so yeah they were a big team for a San Antonio agency oh yeah um and they were starting an SEO division and mm-hmm. because they were starting an SEO division I got to walk in and because I had done these repeat internships mm-hmm. I got to walk in as their like operations manager for the SEO division that they were starting yeah and I was like whoa, like, I'm so not qualified to do this, but yes, I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, like that happens so, a lot of times in the creative stuff. You're like, yeah, I totally yeah. do this. <laughs> but it was awesome. I had to learn, like, I had to learn by fire, you know? Uh-huh. Um, and within, like, six months or so, the SEO division was doing absolutely great, mm-hmm. you know? Um, unfortunately, like, uh, like it's, I think it's, it's, um, scaled down a bit in size. They're, they're a team of six today, and I think they focus a different direction. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, they're great. They're they're honestly great. They're a smaller team today, and I keep in touch with my first boss, the person mm-hmm. who opened the door yeah. for me, Peter. Um, and I don't know. Looking back, I was like, I was young. I only gave them like six or seven months. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it was like, I'm going to go start Yippee. my own. <laughs> yeah, but I... I also have no regret you know i wanted Mm -hmm. to do it Mm. so i know marketing everybody Mm -hmm. can tend to think of the i'm sure when you say if you go up to just random people like a Mm hundred people and you're like hey when you hear the word marketing or the marketing industry what do you think of and i bet a lot of people would have many different answers so how did you select what type of marketing you wanted to do and 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 Mm -hmm. go for that because i'm assuming if you think about it it's overwhelming industry or it can be when you think of all the options so how did you narrow down those options for yourself overwhelming industry yeah there is a combo in marketing that i absolutely love and it's when you have like really really stellar creative paired with really strong digital marketing and Mm -hmm. what i love about it is that the 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 creative Mm -hmm. really good clever creative drives digital marketing results Mm -hmm. harder at the same time really good creative is oftentimes not very measurable yeah on its own. Mm-hmm. And digital marketing makes it measurable. Yeah. Uh, you know, digital marketing is just measurable, period. You know, yeah. In so many different ways. Uh-huh. It was that combo. It was less like, I want to do this type of marketing and this type of marketing. It was like, I want that combo. Mm-hmm. Like, and where can right. we find that combo that someone who's doing that combo really, really well. And San Antonio, like at the time that tribute was starting, you would walk up to somebody and be like, hey, can I like, can I do your business's social media marketing. And they'd be like, what do I, why do I need that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, it was like when it was barely yeah, starting so up. It was, it was, it, it was yeah. just starting out. Mm-hmm. And so that, that combo or agency specializing in that, like wasn't here yet. And that's mm-hmm. what got me really exciting is like, I want that combo and I want it in San Antonio. Yeah. So what yeah. were the first kind of brands or companies that you, that you started working with? Uh, the first ones, you know, we were really fortunate. Like one of the, early believers in what we did that gave us an opportunity was actually like the city of San Antonio. Mm. And they were our first American advertising award and they were doing, um, 
they were doing a project called Better Block SA. Mm-hmm. Where they're yeah. trying to kind of like, yeah. Uh-huh, they, I've heard of it. Okay. And, and they needed a logo for it. And they gave us that opportunity. And those were in our early nice. years. And I'm just super grateful for that. That's another thing about San Antonio. I'm like starting a business here. Mm-hmm. Like the community is incredibly supportive. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. I was like a, a young, like a pretty much... I don't know if I still am, but I was like, <laughs> I was a kid back then saying, yeah. I want to start this agency and the city of San Antonio and all these organizations were supporting them. Like, yeah, that's beautiful. You know, I love and- San Antonio. They, there's that saying mm-hmm. of a big city with a small town feel. And it feels like totally true. Everybody knows somebody yeah. where you're like, oh yeah, I know that person. And you're like, mm-hmm. whoa, I would have never thought that connection would be made. Yeah. So it just seems that I really love that about San Antonio, especially when you're an entrepreneur or coming up, yeah. you need that support and you need that community. And if you can't find it, I feel like you just tend to kind of fail. And it's really good that you found that community. Well, and this place is just so incredibly friendly, you know? Yeah, it is. I take for granted when I go somewhere else and people are like, oh, it's super weird that everyone holds the door open for you. And I'm like, what? (laughs) I grew up in that. Like, that's not not automatic everywhere. Oh, it's not? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know, that, like yeah. or opens doors for you when you're walking into a gas station or whatever. I've heard so yeah. many people tell me like that that's something they notice about Texas. That in is general. true. I'll give you that. Because yeah, when we go like, out of the states or mm-hmm. like, because my mom's family is from Minnesota. So anytime we travel up north, I mean, nothing against the other states or anything, <laughs> but the hospitali- hospitality lessons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> where I notice it, I'm like, <laughs> It, it's just a different vibe. I swear the moment you leave Texas, you cross that border, you're like, this is different and I want to go back. I it. love Texas. I do too. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I say I'm a Texan. I'm not American. I'm Texan. <laughs> 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 anyway, so I hope I don't get canceled for that. People like, oh, Christina. Okay, that's so cool. So um, what are the brands that you're kind of working with now and how you guys kind of just – going against um actually you know what? let me kind of revert mm-hmm. back because I, I just thought about another question that could kind of come before that uh covid i know mm-hmm. that affected a lot of businesses yeah and um all that so how did that affect your business and how did you guys maneuver around it honestly for us it was a crazy year mm-hmm. but it ended up being really good yeah. there were moments where we were very uncertain in that year yeah also, at the time, I was, um, this is like a personal aside, but I was like eight months pregnant when that shutdown happened. Oh, my god! Seven gosh. or eight months pregnant. So I was like, oh, my God, we're fully remote. We've never done that before. Mm. Although I do feel we were better poised because we work on the cloud, digital marketing, like right. all of the tools and technologies of it's online we were already, already very yeah, familiar digital. with, and we were already using them in our office, you know? Yeah. Um, so that wasn't too crazy of a change. Yeah. But... You know, we had a lot before COVID. We had a lot of dental contracts, like with dentists. We Ironic. had a lot. <laughs> yes, we, we even had. Um, there was another. There was another sector where we had a lot of that. Just got. I forget what it was, but they got super shut down. Mm. Oh, we we had events. Like we had San Antonio yeah. Auto Show and, you know, yeah, um, and all those contracts just had to go away overnight. It right. was, you know, and it made perfect sense. Like, mm-hmm. How could they stay on and pay a marketing bill when there was going to be no event? Yeah, yeah, they couldn't even take a patient. Right. You know? um, so there was those moments where it was just really scary. But then mm-hmm. there was also the other side of COVID where everybody needed to go digital. So yeah. anybody who hadn't fully caught up yet or right. wasn't digitally focused in their marketing efforts was a massive opportunity for us. And so all in all, it ended up being a really great year for us financially. But it also just like for everybody else was a very crazy year for us because Mm -hmm. while we ended up being okay, um, it was like we switched so many of our customers because of shutdowns Mm -hmm. and you know, it was, it was taxing. Yeah. Yeah. And so now Mm -hmm. years later, of course, mandates have been lifted and we're kind of back to normal life pretty much. Um, do you still see it like, has your business kind of bounced back completely or is it still kind of like some companies just are still kind of really trying to play safe? Like, I think get the guidelines and stuff. I think we've, we've, we've bounced back completely. You know, something that we left inside of our culture that COVID kind of started was the hybrid. So mm. like the hybrid working situation. Yeah. What was interesting is like at the start of COVID, 
I thought that my team would be very like opposed to ever like, I thought they would be like on cloud nine about working from home. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that they would likely be opposed to ever coming back. Mm. And what is interesting about Tribu is I ended up with the opposite simply because of the dynamic and makeup of our team. Like yes. a lot of them are like mid mid to late 20s. Mm-hmm. Maybe they live in an apartment by themselves or they moved to San Antonio to work at Tribu. Yeah. And and they were like, I need to go into the office. So mm-hmm. they, one of the issues I didn't predict is that they wanted to come back before anybody was allowed to go back. Yeah. There was about half of them that were like, let me back in. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I think that just in general... Humans are just social creatures in general, but I think living in Texas and especially San Antonio, with it being such a friendly city, Mm -hmm. when you're cocooned and you still deal with that, but that energy of, you can't really reach that same energy with talking to someone over the phone or a Zoom call or something. There's something different. So I think when you have a great vibe or just a great city to live in, it's like you you miss that and you start to feel like I need to get back to that like for my mental health. Totally. We had the other half though that were like, yeah, I love this. Can we do this forever? <laughs> and I was that's like, true. man, I don't know how to make both sides happy. So what we did was the, and that's what remains inside of Tribute today, yeah. is the hybrid um, work situation where Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we want everybody in the office collaborating. That's important in creative work. You know? Yeah. But Tuesdays and Thursdays, we don't call it work from home. We call it work from anywhere. We're like, we don't care if you're working at a coffee shop, at your right. home, wherever you got Wi-Fi and can be connected. So that's kind of, that remains. Everything else, I think, has bounced back and has normalized. You know? Nice. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And mm-hmm. the the people that come, you say that mm-hmm. you have some employees that move to San Antonio. Where do you find them that they're mm-hmm. coming from? Well, oftentimes, like, it'll happen that in college. So we've got one who moved here from Maryland. Um, that one's not a, a, a post-college one. She She wanted to be in Texas. She came here. Um, originally I think H-E-B brought her to San Antonio. Mm. Like, um, so she's from Maryland, mm-hmm. um, kind of new to Texas. Absolutely loves to hear determined to never leave. Um, yeah. we've got another one who's, um, from the Seattle area, mm-hmm. went to college here at Trinity. Um, she did repeated internships with us. We said, we don't want to lose you. Will you stay? And then she yeah. ended up meeting her fiance here. Oh, as well so I love it. yeah so that's kind of how it happens is like you know uh, oftentimes we're not the ones bringing them in primarily mm-hmm. unless it's like internship repeated in college they graduated we're like please stay they yeah. love the job then they'll stay you know yeah you know? okay okay now marketing mm-hmm. just like any industry especially like real estate mm-hmm. what we know is there's a ton of trends Totally. Like, and they go, sometimes I feel like they recycle uh, very quickly to yeah, even keep up with. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you're like, you don't know if it's going to last. And the trend that you didn't think was going to last is like going on for years. So how do you guys deal with the different trends? And what are your current favorite trends now in marketing? Well, the big one that everyone's talking about AI. Yeah. Like, I honestly, we like that trend. And yeah, <laughs> it's, as it much comes as in handy. Are like, yeah, people are like, it's going to take your jobs. I'm like, actually, like it, so far, it's made our jobs even better. Mm-hmm. Um, it will change our jobs. Um, but I think it it cha- it changes our jobs for the better. Honestly, yeah. Um, I think you so just have to know how to adapt to it. Totally. Yeah. And have it work with your business. Right. Like I think in the future, if you're a marketer, it'll be like, how good are you at prompting AI? Also, Mm. (laughs) AI needs a lot of fact checks still. Yeah. And um, like, I I definitely think that you can't just, we're not yet to a place where you could take what AI spits out and use it as it is. Mm -hmm. Like you could, but it's probably not the greatest it's going to be. Yeah. 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 Um, The, we're using it right now to put like a, things inside of photos that weren't necessarily there when we did the photo shoot Mm -hmm. to kind of enhance the photo, which is cool. Yeah. That is really cool. Yeah. Um, The other trend is TikTok. You know, I I, I don't know that that's a trend as much as I think it's here to stay. Uh Like, I I think that some of the advertising performance we've seen on TikTok channels actually does better Mm -hmm. um, than other social media channels sometimes. Yeah. Which is a little scary to me because it's not like a U.S. company. Yeah. But, (laughs) But... our job is to bring performance. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so that's a big trend, I think. And our, our world just swims in trends. Like, I don't know mm-hmm. if y'all um, remember threads. 
when that yes. came out and uh-huh. was super popular for a week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and know? then they're gone. Yeah. So it's just like, it, it for us, it's, it's swimming in trends and it's also too deciphering which one of them is a trend worth hopping on. Mm-hmm. Like a trend that's going to be sticky enough yeah. that um, it's worth investing in. Yeah. You like know? essentially TikTok was very much... 60 seconds and under. Then they upgraded to three minutes. And now mm. they have the 10-minute feature. So is that something mm. that you guys are doing as well? Or how do you... Because I know that's such mm. a big thing from 60 seconds to 10 minutes. Is that something you guys are utilizing? You know, we haven't. I don't... I can't recall that we've utilized the 10-minute feature regularly yet. I mm. know that we definitely enjoyed, like, longer videos and yeah. the ability to do that. One of them... Like, one of our uh, customers is... is um, Murray plumbing and we just use TikTok to do kind of like an MTV crib style of showing one of their plumbing yeah. trucks where <laughs> one of the plumbers yeah. gave you a tour of everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and I know that was an instance in which they used like a longer version, but I don't think we've gotten to the 10 minute regular usage yeah. that, that TikTok allows yet. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard to think about what to put in 10 minutes. Well, I guess yeah. here, if you're like us, we're just like, oh, we can just talk. What are you talking yeah. about? 10 minutes is nothing. <laughs> so now what are your favorite brands to work with currently? We kind of said some brands that you started out with, but what's something you're you're really happy about right now? Oh, I love I love all the brands we work with. Um, but I'm really excited about Heaven's Door Whiskey. That's Bob Dylan's whiskey. Yes. Um, so we we do some work with them and I I just love it, honestly. It's just fun. Um the God, there's so many that are fun. Um we've got a restaurant that I'm really excited about that we're doing the branding work for mm-hmm. coming to um, La Cantera, The Rock, that development. Yes. Um, it's affiliated with the Spurs development. And mm-hmm. um, it will be, I think, quite a sizable restaurant. It's a, yeah. yeah, it's a, I don't know how much I can say about it yet because it's not out I know. in the world yet. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. Um, but I'm just, I'm, I'm deeply excited for that. I'm excited for the market's going to, like, put on our community that we're going to have that place to enjoy. And right. It's just, to me, incredibly excited, exciting to be working on the brand for that. Exactly. And like we said, there's mm-hmm. so many cool businesses and different mm-hmm. restaurants. I love Houston's food scene. Um, oh, totally. And I feel like San Antonio's yeah. a couple years behind, but we're really starting to catch up. So mm-hmm. do you find that... And if you can give me like a percentage, like um, like a restaurant, that's an industry, the restaurant industry, or um, like a digital something, a digital company, kind of what takes up most of your business? What takes up like a di- like an like industry, or, yeah, or industry, yeah, or just in general? Hmm. Honestly, we're everywhere in terms of industry, mm-hmm. and we didn't do that on purpose. We wanted the the type of we like to work with someone who wants to disrupt or be a little different. And mm-hmm. we were like, we don't, we don't care so much about the industry as long as they have that like disruption. I want to be different. That would make them a fit for, yeah, for us. Yeah. Cause we want to push. Right. Yeah. Um, but this year we decided that we really get most of our joy and this is so broad. It's not even an industry. I can't claim <laughs> it as an industry niche, but we really get most of our joy out of brands that are B to C focused over Mm -hmm. B2B focused. We love our B2B business, our Mm -hmm. business to business brands. Like we absolutely enjoy them and we love them. You know, we're not like, we're not saying like, oh, kick out, kick out. But we are, no, we would never do that. We love our customers. But our our focus in marketing going forward Uh is much more geared towards business to consumer brands. Okay. Yeah, we just, I don't know, we we enjoy them. And one thing that I would like Tribute to do more of too is like incubate or support some of the really s- small business mm. to consumer brands mm-hmm. because when those brands first start they yeah. really the business consumer brands yeah. most of the time have much more competition mm-hmm. and, and when they those, need a lot of attention right so their competition is more fierce and they're going up against people that have a lot of resources yes and so I, I, because it's what we're passionate about, I kind of want Tribute to kind of focus on or start, how can we help those early stage business to consumer brands? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So how do you go, how do you go about finding those brands? Is there someone on your team who does that or do you wait for them to come to you? Kind of how does that process work? 
so Jason, Jason and Matt, those are the two at Tribute that handle like new business at Tribute. Yeah. And honestly, they participate in the Geekdom community events uh, and they're out networking. networking yeah. And yes, I mean, we get some like, obviously, like we get some through our digital marketing efforts. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> right. right. I hope we, yeah, it works. Hopefully we're I selling it, works, it for yeah. everybody else. It works for us too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, we get some through there. Um, but honestly... Even as a marketer, I would say, like, even as the marketer that sells all that stuff, I would say nothing works more than getting out there and talking mm-hmm. to people and building your community and, like, exactly. networking. And nothing's better than that. Yeah, you know? for sure, for sure. So like, do you find a majority of your business is San Antonio businesses? Or is it, do you have some um, more Texas business, Texas-based or, like, national or global what kind of... So, like, Bob... The, the Bob Dylan brand, mm-hmm. Heaven Store Whiskey, that's actually based in Chicago. Yeah. Um, I find when we first started, it was primarily San Antonio. Now, I think Texas. There's one in Chicago. There's some... They're everywhere in the U.S. As long... If they're in the U.S., mm-hmm. like, we'll, we'll serve that brand. We're yeah. not... We're not going to pretend that we're equipped to do global marketing. We're not. Okay. Like, you know, but yeah. if they're in the U S we'll serve that brand. And I would still say the vast majority of our work is coming from Texas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So are you guys a part of the chamber of commerce? Have you guys thought about that? Chamber of commerce. Mm-hmm. In San Antonio local yeah. chamber, San Antonio, the greater chamber, the San- greater San Antonio chamber of commerce. I don't know if we are. I don't think we are. Yeah, you definitely should. We should it's be. a uh-huh. Gabriel and I just became ambassadors. Hashtag hey, San Antonio congrats. Chamber of Commerce. Mm-hmm. Um, the mug's right there. Oh yeah, we have a mug. And actually, <laughs> the the game of life right behind you. The Chamber of Commerce had a huge part in designing that and oh putting gosh, it to work. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. so cool! Isn't it the do- most adorable thing? <laughs> yes. I love it. And we've actually, one of our children opened it because I was like, don't play it. Just like look at it because I'm curious too. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it's a great, great. Oh my God, there's my. (laughs) No, you got to play this. I want to play this so bad. It's fun. I I don't know if it's fun, but I'm sure Uh it's like very like nostalgic in a sense. Uh So yeah, Chamber of Commerce brings a lot of uh, just businesses together and in making decisions and they are, it's just a wonderful community. We have a monthly meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, Changes locations, just a bunch of networking and bunch getting a, together with a bunch of businesses. We and- should join. I've heard great things, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You really, really should. So mm-hmm. look into that. We can actually hook you up with um, Oliver Garnier. He's our. He was the one who helped us join mm-hmm. and get us um, on that path. So sure, I would love that. You know, I'm gonna put it in my notes. I want mm-hmm. to get into kind of present now. I know that with. Gabriel and I being entrepreneurs and business Mm -hmm. owners and stuff like that, we can tend to have times when I'm like, I'm feeling burnt out or having kids and, Mm -hmm. and, and like work and life balance. How do you find the time for that? Do you have a schedule kind of go through, go through that now that you're kind of like a new mom and everything. And, um, you mean you have two babies, so just tell us all about it. (laughs) Hmm. So honestly, I don't think. I'm not perfect at that. I will admit that. Like I, we never are. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> we you want can to be. be. And I, I do, I do think women put a lot of pressure on themselves we to we really do be able to do absolutely everything at a hundred. And nobody can do absolutely everything at a hundred. I think you make choices. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. I, I do think it's possible. I don't. This sounds skeptical, but I don't think it's actually possible to have it all. But I think it's possible to have a lot. That's yes. very meaningful to you. Yeah. So like I have a lot of quality time with my children. That's very meaningful to me. Yeah. And I have a lot invested into my business. That's very meaningful to me. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's an active, like you have to actively take an hour to yourself to just reflect mm-hmm. and be like, where needs me most right now in accordance yeah. to my priorities. And yeah. sometimes, um, they overlap sometimes. Sometimes it feels they like overlap. It, right? Yeah. Like obviously your business at the end of the day, my children are number one. Yes. But your business is your baby too. It like, is. Yeah. And so sometimes they overlap. And I think sometimes they're going to be at odds with each other. And I mm-hmm. think being reflective and intentional about, okay, in the moments where they're at odds, which one's taking the lead 
and for how long. Mm -hmm. And that rotates, you know, like, I don't think anybody has it perfect. So I can't even tell you like, here's the schedule and it happens like that every day. Yeah. (laughs) Because that is so not true. (laughs) I'm currently working on a schedule now and I'm like, I really hope this helps. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's like, I could tell you the schedule for the next two weeks, you know? (laughs) Or sometimes my mom will Mm -hmm. be like, um, how come you haven't called to talk about this weekend or something? I'm like, mom, I'm living day to day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I can't think till for about tomorrow even, you know what I mean? So totally understand that. Now, growing up in San Antonio, Mm -hmm. we've, seen so many changes happen to the city and i think in the past i would even go as far back as or as least at, at least five years oh totally and so much change in five there years there was no and pearl course, when we were younger i know oh, yeah. um we were talking about it today um when we were doing that other video um they used to call and i, I was like it triggered a memory in me because they we actually used to call i don't know if anybody knows this but if you remember it please comment below uh they used to call six and four the death loop <laughs> because did you ever hear that no. the, that term yeah because there was nothing out here at all and it was just like kind of a just two, like grass yeah just grass <laughs> and and oh. nothing so mm-hmm. they used to call it the death loop because it would lead you to nowhere in a sense or you would feel mm-hmm. like you're just driving and driving and driving and it like goes nowhere so i know now they're doing all this work on it and more lanes right yeah. and as for oh, as yeah. long as i've ever known that's a two-lane highway not anymore. No. You know? like, yeah. mm-hmm. I remember so. when 6 and 4 had stoplights mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. Like at Bandera and at Calabra. Mm-hmm. And it caused so much traffic. So then they're like, we should have adjusted this a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So um, what are your favorite places and th- places to visit in San Antonio? What are your favorite things to do, to eat? Kind of just talk about San Antonio life. Honestly, I love... Um, so I... There's two places that I just th- th- go to. The Rim, because it's close to my house. Yeah. And I love that place. Yeah. You know? It's a good place. Yeah. And I love that they're like the the rock development that's coming to that area. I'm mm-hmm. really excited about that. I think that will be a yeah. lot of fun. Um, the other, and it's funny because I have my life in two very different areas of San Antonio. The other one is like near the Pearl. That's where mm-hmm. I work. Yeah. Um, and but downtown- those are very like similar, but they're very different. The rim yeah, and the Pearl area. Yes, they right? totally are. And what I really love about that Pearl area or just downtown in general is like these cool little pockets that are developing yes. outside of mm-hmm. the big development. Yep. How it's bringing like all this cool culinary and all mm-hmm. these awesome restaurants and all yes. like uh, there's just and then honestly, sometimes it makes me feel it makes me feel old because <laughs> because I'm like everybody's talking about this hip new restaurant and i'm like what wait where when did that show yeah. up you kind of feel like I, a tourist yeah. yourself and i'm like i yeah. live here what are we talking about yes. <laughs> like, yeah uh-huh uh, but yeah it's crazy to think i mean like i don't i don't remember how many years ago it was now that there was no pearl but i remember growing up here like the thing to do if you were like a high school kid was just like okay walk around the mall yeah and you or had fiesta a chili texas or like, sea world you know, or like, yeah. yeah or fiesta texas your parents would just drop you off at fiesta texas yep. and be like pick you up at this time yeah. you know like uh-huh. yeah now i'm like oh my god there is so much to do mm-hmm. I, I i think there was always something to do but there is just so much more to do it's yeah. cool like the pace of development here is awesome yeah, and it's just yeah. very rapid. It feels like I can't yeah. even keep up, like you just said. I know that by the Pearl, mm-hmm. so I love how that area mm-hmm. kind of where you clo- are close to work, they're trying to make it s- the walkability score higher. Oh, yeah. And so mm-hmm. I know you have like St. Mary's and then mm-hmm. the Pearl, so they're trying to make that whole spot um, just this real, like just completely revamp. And I think they actually... Awesome. I saw it on the news, or not, I didn't see it on the news, but I saw it on an article a while ago, but kind of where, um, to do 281 and 35, and it's that sign where you are beautiful, you know that, that sign, yeah. right? Right across from that is kind of like the Pearl and the St. Mary's area. They're really kind of just revamping that whole spot. I think Red McCombs or his business. Oh they yeah. They purchased like all that land and they're of- going to turn it into like live work mm-hmm. play space and it's yes. right by the Pearl too. Yep. Yeah. And you're going to just be able to walk over there. So it's just really cool. It's lovely. Uh, Have you tried Mm. Best Quality Daughter? I love that place. I love it. The drinks are good. The food is good. And inside is so cute and creative. Mm. Yes. A funny story. I once took a 
you know, I, I, I love that place. I do a lot of business lunches there. Nice. And oh, that's I a once, good place to, yeah. Except you. for if you have a peanut allergy, oh. <laughs> I once <laughs> took somebody who had a peanut allergy and he was like fine with it. He was like, Oh yeah, I'll try it. I'll just order something, whatever they got without peanuts. And I felt like they were like, okay, we got to be like extra careful because yeah. it, it's like peanut mm-hmm. or nuts and everything there. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely delicious. Like, so if you haven't been yeah. there, uh, best quality mm-hmm. daughter, I know it sounds like a really interesting, mm-hmm. funky name, um, but it's very Asian infused and it's just amazing. You guys have to go try it. Also, they did awesome. Like he enjoyed his meal too. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a funny story. Yeah. And there's like, also um, that culinary, like a bunch of mm-hmm. culinary students go there and they yeah. learn to run a restaurant and i think i forgot what it's called but uh that- cia right the culinary institute of yes. america my brother went there that's Did what it i really? know yeah oh mm-hmm. my god the mm-hmm. amazing food and it's just so cool mm-hmm. watching somebody because you know they're actively mm-hmm. learning something so you're just you feel like you're a part of their learning experience which is oh you're talking about the restaurant they have that's connected to the school yes. yeah i forget the yeah. name of it too but it's a great place. okay but we're talking like, about the same thing yes yeah 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 Yeah, and that place is a cool experience like it is you know. i took my best friend i think for her birthday and it was just yeah. i like i felt really cool but i was like oh my god they're learning <laughs> we went one time to support uh a dinner that my brother was doing and they did this like churro like mexican hot chocolate dessert Oh my god! And it was like to die for. Yeah, and we like totally abused my brother after that. We were like, now that we know, you know how to make that. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're making that all the time. <laughs> so um, let's kind of mm-hmm. also. I just mm-hmm. thought about it right now, and I was like, I should have asked this earlier. Um, tell me about where you got the word tribute from and yeah. wh- why was that chosen versus, or did you have any other names? Sometimes that's really cool to hear mm-hmm. other potential names that you thought about calling your I can't business. even remember what the other ones are now, but we literally had like a list with like 50 names on yeah. it <laughs> and tribute wasn't one of the 50 on it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then when we heard tribute, we were like, at first we were like, well, what does that mean? You know? Uh-huh. And, when I learned what it meant, I was like, oh, it really doesn't matter. That's our name. Like, it, it means tribe in Latin, Spanish, French. It pulls from the word tribe. Uh-huh. And that's what we aim to do is build tribes for these really awesome brands and these really awesome businesses, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, that that combo of creative and measurable digital marketing. Like, um, the result of that done really well is a tribe. Like loyal yes. consumers, loyal followers that love a brand, that talk about a brand, that community around a brand. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's where the name came from. Um, yeah. So do you have any mentors in, in the business? So many. I like and I don't I have so many mentors that I'm super, super grateful for. Mm-hmm. Uh my first one actually came from one of our first clients here. It was like First Mark Credit Union. Their yeah. CMO at the time, Fred Hagerman. That was my first like San Antonio business mentor. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, first first real mentor in life, of course, my father. You yeah. know, like um, he passed, went to heaven, but he was the first. You yeah. know, uh, but Fred Hagerman, and that just speaks to like the San Antonio business community. I think he he ended up moving for a job to a different place, but it was just, I reached out to a stranger on LinkedIn said, Hey, I'm like this person and I'm starting this and I have this dream. And he was like, well, I'll give you a job. Like I'll give you a project I have. Mm -hmm. And also sure. I'll meet you for coffee. And then he grew into a super valuable business mentor. You know, um, Tom Cuthbert, he runs the Vistage community. Have Mm -hmm. you heard of Vistage? Yeah. I, it sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. Okay. It's, it's, it's a bunch of, um, they have a lot of like leadership, uh, peer groups and training yeah. and development. They do some networking events and really it's a great place. They they have a CEO group or mm-hmm. like peer group and that's a great place, honestly, to meet other business owners who, you know, oftentimes going through some hard stuff, like you mentioned burnout, yeah. things like that. They kind of just support each other and lift each other up. Mm-hmm. Tom Cuthbert is the chair of my Vistage peer group and mm-hmm. he's become a great mentor as well. And he, like you... 
when you say mentors, I'm like, I could go on for like hours yeah. because <laughs> there are so many people that I'm grateful for that just yeah. didn't owe me anything and, yeah. and taught me so much, yeah. you know? And I think like, that just speaks true to the mm-hmm. community in San Antonio or just totally. the where we kind of started with the friendliness of the people and them willing to help. And it's just sometimes out of the goodness of their heart, there's such a genuine... Mm-hmm. Um, mood and like love in in the city of san antonio totally it it really breaks my heart sometimes when i hear people don't have that good of an experience so oh really i've never heard that only a couple times like some people are uh they are like want to move here Mm -hmm. or and they're here for a little bit just trying to try it out and sometimes they get really bad feedback they're like i hate the people here blah 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 and i'm like Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I would have mm-hmm. taken, we would have picked you up and taken you to a good restaurant. You don't go by yourself. <laughs> like, we'll show you the good part of San Antonio. Mm-hmm. But that's really cool that um, you you find those people, they've, you know, I think just people sometimes we can uh, attract people to gravitate towards us. So sometimes it's just mm-hmm. things happen for the right reasons, you know? Also, right, we, we love, we have to have small wins as business owners you totally. have to have big wins as business owners. What's some of the your favorite wins that you've kind of both personal or in the business that kind of made you feel really good? And you're like, wow, that's helping me keep going. Wins? Hmm. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm too hard on myself because I know it. Like, I know exactly I, you know, how that is. So I'll probably yeah. relate. I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, big wins, honestly. You know, they say most businesses fail before 10 years, right? Yeah. So for some reason, like 10 years was so special to me. Because when yeah. I when I set out to start Tribute, it was just like I knew, even though I was very young, I knew the risk, I knew the number of mm-hmm. them that do not survive and probabilities yeah. and that I was choosing to do something that, you know, I needed to beat mm-hmm. unfavorable odds. Like, yeah. so for some reason, even though my mission is to go way longer than 10 years, of hitting course. that 10-year mark felt very special to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, Little wins, I say there's little wins every day. day. To me, the little wins that I love the most are like when you see, like when there's a designer um, doing something awesome and you could see that they just got passionate and that passion went exactly the right direction and Mm -hmm. they are working on the coolest brand and bringing it to life. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I love that moment, you know? Yeah. And Uh, you're also, you're not just only helping the business, but that person you're that employee is also being helped that growth yes yeah. like that growth and that joy moment in work um i'm a big believer in like work is a huge part of life to just throw in the trash do something that you love like yeah. you know and mm-hmm. so it if if i see that happening at tribute like i see people getting that from yeah. tribute that's a huge achievement to me. Yeah. Because you know? your business is your baby and you're like, oh, wow, that felt really, really good. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Like, I, I, yeah, I want people to love their work. I, I think work is still work, right? Mm-hmm, but I, yeah. I want to create an environment that as much as one can love work, they can yeah. love coming to Tribute. They can love growing there. They can love being challenged there. They can um, feel secure there. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's 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 what I – and and practice their craft. Like, have a place where you could really, really get excellent at your craft. Mm-hmm. It's not my achievement at all. But anytime I see a tribe member like get married or have a baby or, yeah. you know, I celebrate that so hardcore. I'm like, okay, cool. Tribute had like a little teensy itsy bit of a hand in that life that's forming yeah. now. Yeah. Like awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Having a supportive husband and all of that stuff, but you also have the core of your business. So that's also your baby and I know you guys aren't in business together but Mm -hmm. you still husband and wife still have to work together totally a lot and um a business is is very trying sometimes and having a family or is just trying because you're being pulled in so many different directions so how do you find working together has helped you Man, it took us, now we've been doing it so long, we can't imagine anything different, right? right? <laughs> yeah. But it took us a long time. Like, I think at the beginning, it was cool that we got to practice working together before we had babies together, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but is that babies together and working together is like level two oh, yeah. in the video game. <laughs> like, I don't know, <laughs> five, six, a hundred? No, it's like a hundred. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, but like those first couple of years, we actually did argue a lot about a lot of different things inside of the business. Probably drove some people crazy. They were just like, that's just Sarah and Jason, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, but we learned, like over time, we learned how to divide and conquer and to really truly let each other own each other's spaces. So mm-hmm. like 
I love sales. I absolutely love sales, but Jason owns sales at Tribute. Like he's responsible for setting the sales goal, the new business goal, mm. um, managing everybody who works in that area of Tribute. Mm-hmm. You know, and he really like has a lot of autonomy and freedom over how that happens. Yeah. Um, I manage more of the operations and the work process mm-hmm. and things like that. And of course, I will never fully exit sales. I love yeah. sales. <laughs> so I still do some sales. But when I have somebody saying, hey, want to talk to you about this? I say, okay, great. I'm really excited. And mm-hmm. Jason's going to write the proposal, talk to you, take it over the line. And I can trust that. Does that, yeah. you know, so finding no, our own, makes a lot of sense. F- finding our own areas inside where it's like, you own this, you own this. Yeah. Like, because we both needed to be able to come home at the end of the day and trade stories. That's mm-hmm. important too, where it's like, yeah. I genuinely, until I get home, have no idea what his work day was like. And he doesn't have any idea what my work mm. day was like, even though it's in the same place. Yeah. Which is, I think, healthy. And that allowed us to like achieve that together, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, so we actually purposely don't work together at yeah. work. <laughs> that was the answer. <laughs> like, yeah. No, that great. Then, it, it works like, differently for everybody. But yeah. I think because Gabriel and I are literally together like 24-7. We're just yeah. joined at the hip. And even sometimes mm-hmm. when it's like there might be an opportunity to separate or, to mm-hmm. separate, and we're like, okay, I think we do need to divide and conquer. It's going to be weird. But mm-hmm. just for a moment in time, something happens and it like out of our hands and it brings us back together. I'm like, that's kind of weird how the universe is like, no, y'all need to just be together. So I think that working together, whether it's like neck and neck, right by, right by each other, or just in the same business, yeah. you, it's so funny. Cause I don't know if, did you guys feel this when you're like, Oh, we have great communication in our relationship. We're going to be great working together. We got great communication, great trust, yeah. a great foundation. And then when you start working together, it's a whole different entity. And it's like, you don't even know that person anymore. Did you guys experience that as well? A or little like bit, a little yes. Bit? Was, so when we started working together, Tribute was already like, I had already started Tribute and it was already about like a year and a half old. Ah, uh, okay. And so he was, you know, and one day I had an uncle who was like, hey, you know what? I think you should just hop into this business. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jason was studying architecture. He was still in school. He wanted to be an architect. Yeah. <laughs> I actually fought it. I was like, no, because Uh we're about to get married and Mm -hmm. I don't want him to look back one day ever and say he didn't pursue his thing. He just jumped into my thing. Uh, You know, like that would be a bad equation. Yeah. So I was very like, no, like that's, that's Mm -hmm. not. And he, and he was like, I want to do this. Yeah. So I, wait, I forgot what your original question is. (laughs) And then just like went on that story. No, you're fine. But so we already knew, yeah. kind of, not mm-hmm. really, not to the extent that you find out. Yeah. But we already knew, mm. like, working together might not be, like, we the best for us. And yeah. we had skepticism about it going yeah. in. That skepticism helped. Mm-hmm. It actually is the best for us because we know nothing different now. We've built our whole life that way. Yeah. But that skepticism helped. Even with that skepticism, though, we were still jolted the same way that you yeah. say, like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Ooh. yeah, yeah. You're a red personality right now, and yeah. or I'm a red personality. You want to be blue today? This is yeah. how do we communicate like that? Yeah. Um. Okay. Cool. So we are coming up on the hour. So I cool. wanted to do this before before I forget. Um. So I love art. I love being creative. It's kind of like what I told you in the beginning. I was all over the place before I met him. <laughs> all over the place with just awesome. creativeness. So. What I like to do is I like to create canvases um, out of wax, like crayon wax, and I like to melt the canvases. So That is super um, cool. We give it to clients for closings, and um, Gabriel is like, hey, why don't you do it for all of our podcast guests? So I'm Mm -hmm. keeping the tradition alive. So I have a canvas for you today. Thank you. And da-da-da-da-da-da. Oh, my gosh. There you go. This is so cool. And this is made out of crown? Yep. Crayons, melted crayons and crayon wax. and I love it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So, and our business card is on the back because, you know, you have to drop your business name all the time. <laughs> so cool. So, yeah, um, put it wherever you'd like or do whatever you want with it. But that's just a gift from us to you. And thank you for bringing us pralines. <laughs> of course. Um, I'm like, 
Of course, I'm trying to lose weight, but Man, I'm going to eat special. these pralines. This is really cool. This thank is, you. This is an awesome memory of this, too, now. Like, uh-huh. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, thank mm. you. Thank you. Thank you. Huh. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. I would have asked what your favorite colors were at first, but sometimes I just go with the flow. I love it. Okay. Cool. But I love the ones you picked. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um, to continue on, um, tell us what you have in plans for... The future and, and the future. Yeah, where mm-hmm. do you see yourself in f- y'all's business in five years from now? You know, the definitely that B to C route that we were talking about. I okay. hope five years from now we have really, really like driven our marketing, our language, and the way that we talk about ourselves at Tribute in that direction. You know, uh-huh. I um, it, honestly that tribe building aspect. So I don't want to sound like more of the same, but. Um, but sometimes like why more of the same, but better, like enhanced. Yes. And, and honestly, I see our our kids being a little bit older and I'm very excited to explore (laughs) that too. Like, uh, Uh um, I, I don't want tribute ever to be, um, a really large company that employs hundreds and hundreds. That's never Mm. been my ambition or my dream, but I've always wanted tribute to be the best at what we do. And I think we actually like being the best is, it, not just in a phrase, but that's actually a, a very big goal to be the best at what it is yeah. we currently do. Um, and so in five years from now, I hope we're tracking towards that mm-hmm. and we've gotten much deeper because I do think that pursuit is, yeah. it's going to, how long does it take to be the best at something? Yeah. Does that, you know? Yeah. So do you have like, other marketing mm-hmm. um agencies that you Mm. look up to or that you kind of aspire to whether it's local or Mm. just like a global or national brands kind of what other what agencies do you look up to or you're like wow i'm inspired by them there's a like there's a lot honestly uh the digital agencies there's an agency called huge there's an agency called basic these are the big guys they're working with the googles of the world they're launching um they're launching beats like mm. brands like beats yeah um they're they're doing big time e-commerce you know like the they're they're building like the under armor e-commerce and the nike right. e-commerce and their digital capability is just awesome mm-hmm. and i look at like some of their work and i ogle at it you know yeah um and so um those would be two that i think i admire on the digital side in terms of the creative side Oh my God, there's so many. And it's less, it's less to me admiring like the agency sometimes and more admiring like the actual pieces of creative um, Mm -hmm. that came out of whatever agency. Cool. And one last question before we go, before we get to the live Q or to the Q and a question. Um, Tell us about some awards you've gotten, magazines you've been in and, and all that jazz. Oh, wow. Uh, so Tribute's won over 100 awards for our work, mm-hmm. um, which I'm really proud of. Some of them, American uh, Advertising Federation, from mm-hmm. the American Marketing Association, from the Academy of Interactive and Visual Arts. Yeah. Uh, the Webbies, uh, not the Webbies, I'm sorry. Hold on. Whoa, we haven't won a <laughs> Webby yet. The W3 Awards. Oh, uh, okay. The Tellies, like... Um, the Webbies is big. Yeah, the Webbies yeah. is a big deal. Uh, and so we've been blessed with over 100. Mm-hmm. And that I'm, I'm very proud of it. And honestly, that's credit to the tribe. Like that's their work that takes those awards. I feel blessed. I was nominated for the San Antonio Business Journal, like Women's Leaders Awards. Yeah. Magazines and stuff. Some of our work's been on E! Entertainment News, BuzzFeed, The yeah. Economist, like some BuzzFeed. cool places. I've mm-hmm. written some Forbes articles through the Forbes Agency Councils. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we've, I feel blessed for it, but those are the places we've been and awards we've won. <laughs> yeah. yeah nice so uh is there anything else you want to add anything interesting um got something coming up before we head out just stay tuned from some <laughs> really exciting stuff coming to san antonio like we're working on some incredibly exciting brands right now I bet. and i wish i could talk about them they're not there yet yeah. But in six months' time, you will know. When you yeah. hear about that exciting thing, you will be like, that's what she was talking about. One of our <laughs> first right. guests, uh, mm-hmm. Joe Campa, he's mm-hmm. what, he does the... the mm. Chamber of Commerce. He, no, he's yeah. with the Chamber of Commerce, but he does the... 
something specific, but uh, I forgot his his title in the Chamber of Commerce. I can't think of it to with the, yeah. at the top of my head. But he was like, "There's some big things coming. Can't really tell yes. y'all right now." But it's just really cool to 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 know really cool things are coming. Like you just, I don't know. Mm. There's just this vibrating energy yeah. in San Antonio. Sometimes you just feel it. You see the construction going on. You see things expanding. Things totally. getting bigger. Restaurants coming new areas are developing and it's just this wonderful place to be in so i think you are in a great location Mm -hmm. and i think your business is just going to continue to grow it just has to there's no other way you know what i mean you're gonna go 50 years i hope so (laughs) (laughs) if i got him in me (laughs) (laughs) okay so Mm -hmm. tell the youtube world Mm -hmm. Um, it's straight to the camera and tell them a little bit about you, where they can find the website, contact information, a little bit of zing, all that jazz. Cool. So Sarah Helmy again, founder of Tribu. Um, you can find us at wearetribu.com. Um, our Instagram handles and social media, same thing at we are Tribu. And, um, you can find our contact details there. If you're ever interested in connecting, we would love to hear from you. Okay, well, thank yeah. you, Sarah. I was about to thank you for having away. me. Like, no, thank you for no. coming. I know sometimes I, when we're kind of asking people, uh-huh. we're like, "Yes, be a part of our podcast." It's at our house, and we live on the far west side. So sometimes they travel a far distance, and I feel bad. But I'm like, "Here's a canvas. Oh, <laughs> thank you for your time. No, it was <laughs> lovely. On a podcast, so but it really helps that you kind of live on the side of town. So even if you live on the side of town, or if you're far away, thank you for making the trip. Sometimes it's it can be difficult to to drive mm-hmm. at night or it's mm-hmm. raining or something, but it's actually good weather today. So mm-hmm. thank you for coming in general. Of course. Thanks for having me. And we'll be in touch too as well. Yeah. But thank you guys so much for watching and <laughs> uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Comment below, hit the like button. It really helps the algorithms. Gabe and I are really, really trying to emphasize on growing our YouTube channel this year. And uh, two things, if you want to be a, po- a p- guest on our podcast, please get in touch with us. We'd love to have you on, especially if you're a mover and shaker here in San Antonio. You want to help promote your business to our lovely audience everywhere. And if you have a luxury listing that is just you want the YouTube world to see it and you want a complimentary vid- video done for you, Gabriel and I do that as well. So Uh, Take a look at that on our channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already, like I said. But yeah, I'm Christina Zachary. This is Home Sweet Home San Antonio Live. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys next month. And I'm not going to tell you who the guest is, so that's going to be a surprise. So stay tuned. Like us on Facebook and all of the social medias. 210-504-5301. Get in touch. We will see you guys later. Thank you for watching, and bye. (laughs)